I just want to thank um, our audience members for joining us uh, for this conversation. I'm really excited to have these extremely um, awesome gentlemen here with me. I'm Casey Barron, the Senior Film Program Director for the festival. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce this awards conversation um, between Carl Maroach, who is the co-writer and director of The Blue Orchid, which is our jury prize winner for the Dark Matters competition this year. We also have have uh, Mr. Fernando Gonzalez Gomez, who is the writer director of Standard, joining us, and Phil Wall, who is the director of The Bookkeepers, joining us. All fantastic films in their own right. Guys, congratulations to all of you, and really, thank you so much for, from the first place, just uh, considering our competition and submitting your stories, but also for joining me today. And um, I guess we'll, we'll start with Carl here. I'm just curious, Carl, what, what's your headspace like right now? How does it feel to be a jury prize winner of the festival? It's uh, completely surre surrealistic, I think, because, um, yeah, the whole, we're not at your festival and the festival hasn't, I don't know when you're going to transmit this, but the festival <laughs> hasn't even started and, and now I won the competition and it's, uh, it's totally overwhelming and... Um, and very, I'm very, very grateful because this movie has been uh, has has been my life for quite a long time. So um, having you uh, giving it uh, a thumbs up is uh, means a lot to me. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, of course. Fernando, what about you? Uh, well, it's more or less the same sensation of. of like like Carl, no? like the, the same feeling. Uh, we are a really small movie for us. It's a really kick off uh, to won that prize. Uh, I remember on Friday when you called me, I was driving and my girlfriend was sitting down riding behind me and she was driving and something. And then you read in the iPhone, Austin, Texas calling it. I don't know, no one in Austin <laughs> <laughs> who is calling me. Answer, answer the phone. They are calling from the festival. And I was a really, really happy all the team is excited. Uh, I, I call the, 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 the full cast because everyone is a, a friend of, 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 of mine and, and the producer and everyone is really happy. Being the official selection also is an a honor and an award and be awarded is uh, well, crazy. Thank you so much. Phil, what about you? Yeah, I, I have to echo everything those two just said. I'm glad that I got to go third. And, um, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I mean, just to be in the festival is an honor, and and we're so thrilled. And and I think for me, this process has really um, illustrated sort of the 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 nature of my film for for you both. It's about me and my father, and so it's it's a this team is my family. Um, and I know that when we're working on these collaborative projects, you get really close to, to everyone you're working with. And so when I got the call from Casey, it was like, I mean, I had to catch my breath and, and all that stuff just to be, you know, this is our world premiere. This is our first time sharing this film. And, and it's so close to, to us as, as all of our work is. And then on top of that, this is a personal, um, story. So. I got off the phone with Casey and I, and I told my girlfriend and then the next thing I did was go see my dad and tell him and uh, and then I called my sister and my brother and and so yeah this whole process is has been fantastic and and I'm excited uh, to to share this story and then see all of these other films and and just sort of share the process with the other artists but um, for for me and my team it's really shown me like the the team is my family and it's it's brought us closer together and of course we want to celebrate the film and um we're just so honored and, and so thrilled and you know thank you all so much absolutely and congratulations again to all three of you um i'll probably say congratulations 50 times over in this call but uh <laughs> you're all really deeply deserving of it and uh, carly actually mentioned something that i'm curious for all of you i mean it i'm sure it was just 
such a journey to get here. And obviously you all spoke about this in a myriad of ways in your interviews, but I'm curious what it was like for each of you, the, the process of getting here. You all started in a certain point in development with the genesis of an idea, and now you are uh, <laughs> award winners, uh, jury prize winners. Uh, what, what was that sort of process like, uh, if, if you could mind that down? And Fernando, we can start with you on that. And and this supposed to be an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, uh, it's, it's difficult to express in, in English. Probably in Spanish will be better, but I, I'm gonna try. Well, it's 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 it's, it's, it's when when you think uh, uh, in the in the past when when you start to think about the, the this this small idea and and finally you are here in a in a. In this conversation with that guys with all this talent with this big festival and being awarded, it's crazy to think about it, and it's really really nice to 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 do this exercise uh, and 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 think about it. Uh, we we started with a really small idea that was this this guy. This uh, I, I am the the main character is Nico Verona. Nico Verona is a really good friend of mine. He been working with me in my 15 years doing short films 35 with him and uh, no not all the in, in not in all the the, the short films he was working but uh, he uh, be one of the characters of those uh, short films like the 90 percent of the times during 15 years and then finally when we got this idea the first the, the very first point was the main character, the main character, the character of Thomas, this guy obsessed with the harmony and with the symmetry and with the classic music. And then starting with this character, uh, we develop the rest of the atmosphere and the universe of, of Thomas. And we are here uh, with a long uh, time on, of work and, and, and long journey, but we are really happy to, to release the, the, the movie probably at the end of this year. and and be in Austin and, and be the premiere. More or less the world premiere was in Austin because we, we did a small premiere in a film festival in Spain, but was only for Spanish territory. Then the world premiere, it's, it's been in, 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 in Austin and for us, it's a pleasure and uh, we are very happy. Pleasure for us, thank you. Uh, Phil, you wanna jump in? Yeah, sure. The, the question is kind of how, how this all started and yep. in, in the process. I, I mean, I think for me, this is, uh, to echo what he said, this is surreal um, because it, this film for me was more like the film revealed itself to me, which I think can happen in any type of storytelling and in this case, documentary. But, you know, go back to 2014, my mom's book came out and she, it was her first book and it was supposed to be this breakthrough for her in her career and, and she ended, she died. Uh, she got very sick right before the book came out and she never got to speak on the book. Um, and so of course that was a powerful experience for me. And what happened was a few of the events where she had been booked to promote her book invited my dad. And so I did feel this uh, compulsion to go and capture that we had been doing film or video i'd been creating video pieces for my mom in anticipation that we were gonna put interviews with her on facebook and things like that to promote her book um and so then i thought well i'll go out and film my dad and uh use that instead uh and it was more like over time i started to see that something powerful was happening um with the people we were doing the events with and and it was more that the this story started kind of um you know uh uh tapping on my shoulder uh that i that i needed to take some time with this and really uh let it happen so uh, i guess it wasn't really until i started editing um a few years a couple years ago that uh, I really started the process of like writing this film that you're seeing at the festival. And so, I mean, and that was also happening as I'm, you know, proximal to losing my mom and going through that grief. And uh, so it really is, a, it really is a, a piece of me and a piece of all of the people I talked to along the way who told me stories about their own 
uh, grief experiences or losing a loved one. Um, and so to share it in this forum and to have some of those thoughts projected back onto me in new ways, um, it's really like a living kind of, it, like the film has its own life now, which is what I'm seeing just through the very short conversations that we've had about it, Casey, uh, and that we had with Barbara, um, where I'm seeing it now with fresh eyes, even though uh, it's something that I've lived with for so long and um, not struggled with, you know, but I mean, it, 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 some of these decisions are really hard to make when you're, when you're crafting and writing. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, I think this film is more a, a, of, of one that it showed itself to me over time and it was a process of whittling it down and, and really listening, listening and focusing on what's there and um, a, a, instead of trying to um, make something happen or, 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 or hit uh, a uh, particular storyline. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that, Phil. Carl, what about you? It's a long story, but... Um, <laughs> We're here for my, long stories, man. Me, me and my good friend uh, and co-writer, Hans Lake Jacobsen, we were out walking one day and uh, we were going shopping in a supermarket. And then there was this rack packed with the blue orchids on it. Wow. And we were like, wow, they're beautiful and stuff and talked about it. And then this uh, woman comes up to us and says, did you realize that blue orchids are fake and that they can never exist without you uh, uh, like uh, synthetically uh, manipulating the flower to become this blue uh, color. And we were like so fascinated by that whole concept that we created a whole movie about it. Like um, the fact that that you can fall in love with something that's synthetic or fake. Or it, it, yeah, it, it's a weird story, but um, yeah, that's that's how the idea began. And then I remember writing a manifesto about it, like we have to do it uh, really fast and uh, we have to do it only on a handheld camera and documentary style. And every rule in that manifesto was broken. <laughs> like we couldn't use that manifesto for nothing. So it was just so stupid, but um yeah, the, the process has been uh, me and, and Hans writing it and then everything that we wanted to do, we couldn't because we were doing a no budget film. And so it's one of these stories where the film kind of takes on a life of its own and and guides the way by itself. It's, it's really, it's been weird and uh, a learning experience, I have to say. And it, it took way longer to do it than I uh, originally planned. <laughs> but uh, that's how it goes. Yeah, that's how the idea came about. Uh, don't going shopping. <laughs> that's a great story. Wow. Um, with, with no mask, with no mask. No, Carl, going shopping with no mask. Because what's in the <laughs> Oh, yeah, there was no mask. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> a different time, a different era. Um, no, it, it's, no fu mask. it's funny, Carl, that you mentioned that uh, at the end there, as far as a, a sort of learning opportunity or lesson. I'm, I'm just curious for all of you. And um, Phil, I think we can probably start with you on this one. But what... I'm just curious, what was maybe the most valuable takeaway um, that that you've had from your entire experiences uh, making your diff making your films uh, um, for each of you? Phil, you sort of spoke of that um, to a certain point. Now that you're getting to see this different life and to get this different perspective of this film, is there anything else you could add on to that or expound upon with that? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess there'd be two. Uh, well, I'll attack it two ways. One, I'll say. I'll say just sort of as an artist, as a storyteller, um, I've always sort of thought my job is to stay out of the way of the story. Um, and in this one in particular, um, I, it, it, it really challenged me because it was so tempting to, um, to like narrate it uh, or really give you my thoughts. And so it, it, I learned a lot of restraint and um, I think, or I exercised a lot of restraint to try to really focus on what I felt was most valuable for the audience in this circumstance. 
And that was, and here comes the personal part. And that was that, uh, that I feel like people that, that other people bring themselves, uh, to a story, uh, and, and that's, that's a film, a book, uh, or that's even when, when we're up, you know, giving a presentation or just meeting people for the first time that the stories that people brought to me when we were out on the road and my dad was doing his talks and I was trying to capture it, the, the stories people brought to me impacted me in such a way, um, that helped me in a way that I couldn't have imagined or expected, um, that what I felt was I wanted to make something where that that replicated that experience where a, a, a viewer could the film could meet the viewer wherever they are um, and not get in the way of their personal experience to allow them to separate themselves from the story and say well that's that's not going to happen to me I'm not going to have that experience um, and so I learned that or I feel that I've focused on that as a, as a storyteller, but then also just, it's taught me a lot uh, uh, on a personal level in terms of interacting with people who are trying to share something um, and allowing for, uh, you know, bringing myself to that process and allowing people to bring themselves and not trying to editorialize um, in my storytelling, but then also in personal conversations uh, so, um, yeah, those are th that's what comes to mind when you you know talk about kind of what did I learn um, making this film. Gotcha. And Carl, what about you? Something that's been very important with this film for, to make it work has been world building. I would call it like the the film takes place in 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 the real world, but it's kind of its own isolated universe where. And and the process of doing that was pretty difficult actually because I realized there was there was a lot of stuff that I just couldn't show I couldn't. Uh, the film is definitely like social commentary on lots of stuff and people can make their own sense of it when they see it. But I realized I couldn't do it like one to one. This is what it's about. I can't show this. I I can't show the civilization. I can't show cars driving around. I can't because it breaks the illusion. The film is one big like. Uh, what can you say? It's a uh, like uh, uh, temptation. Like you go, come this way, and and you get get sucked into this illusion. So, yeah. When I say that the film took on a life of its own, it's actually that's the best way to express it because at some point it was like this is great, this is a good scene, but we can't show it. It, it ruins the whole experience of it. So I really. That's a has been a great learning experience also to insist on taking your time to actually find interesting solutions to this problem because uh, it was not always easy to uh, to find a way in it but um, yeah the the film has its own internal logic and I, I'm gonna pursue that uh, in the future projects as well that's for sure. I guess I, I'm not very good at seeing the real world as the real world, I think. Apparently. <laughs> uh, you know, we all have our own perspective on it. That's what makes yeah. you all unique and fantastic filmmakers. Fernando, go ahead. Uh, well, like, like Carly, in our case, um, we tried to create also our own universe in the, in the film, even if all the film is happening in between the house and the, where where Thomas work that is like a small supermarket in this small town uh, then i'm used um, i used I, I used it to 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 be the writer of all my short films and then i need to interpret them in the characters uh, but in that case, uh, the characters uh, grow a lot a lot when when we was worked with the with the actors. And then step by step, we we try to 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 do the vision of the main character of of Thomas in in all the film. Then the the universe that we create was the universe of the main character of of Thomas, and then doing all these all these. Uh, all this work is, I think, is 
probably the 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 mainly uh, uh, I mean the the, the the biggest work or, or the or the more uh, difficult uh, work that we uh, have in the in the in the movie. You know, create this small work that is only the work that uh, Thomas sees uh, in his eyes. That's absolutely. It's interesting that I feel like all three of you sort of touched on um, Carl's overarching idea of world building in, in different ways and how you all sort mm -hmm. of went about it and shaped it. That's so important. So thank you to all of you for touching on that a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm curious also, um, for all of you, I'm sure there may have been moments of fear or doubt as you're going through an arduous process, honestly, of production and, and development for it's uh, incredibly difficult and only the folks who've been through it understand that. Um, are there any sort of tips or advice or even just thoughts you all have that you could share for filmmakers who are sitting in a position where they may be jumping into their first feature or their first short, Fernando. You mentioned um, the myriad of shorts you worked on before you jumped in. Uh, I'm curious if any of you can speak to that. And Fernando, we can start with you there. Uh, a lot of time, work, effort, and illusion. I always said that uh, you have to to keep, keep going, keep doing things. I, I, I didn't study uh, nothing about uh, do films. I'm aeronautical engineer, then I didn't study uh, nothing about uh, movies. And when I uh, was uh, studying the second year of career, I started to to make uh, short films. I remember uh, that I entered in internet searching what I need to do a film like this. <laughs> Uh, I remember Google answers, but I don't know what is the, the name in English, but it's like photos is the name in Spanish. That is where a lot of people enter and talk about different uh, points, like uh, okay, there's photos of movies of, or about cars, about houses, about, okay. And then I remember wrote there uh, asking what kind of people I were, what, what people I need to do, to do a film, because even I didn't know what a short what what a short film was. You know, I I want to do a movie, but I don't know what kind of movie. If short, if long, I don't know nothing. And then I I started to make it uh, these these short films in like 15 years ago. And with the same thing that we started, we was wrong because first move, first short film I remember was me and Nico, no more. Second, we have uh, people about for the sound. And in the third, we have our director. And in the and then start to start step by step, we grow and the team grow. And that is curious is that the movie standard is make it is make it with the same team. All the directors of standard are their their first feature film. Art director, sound, uh, dress, uh, makeup. Everyone came from my team of short films. Then we, we've been fighting 15 years together doing short films. And then now all together shooted the, the first feature film, in my case, in the case of Nico and all the team. Then, well, probably the, the best advice that I can give to people that now is fighting to, 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 to reach or the, 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 the possibility to shoot a feature film is keep going, doing things, create things and shoot films things year to year to year and and finally probably they they will get their their opportunity i couldn't help but um think of carl and uh the manifesto he wrote <laughs> uh, because it's like it's it, i feel like that happens so many times where you you set off with an idea and a plan and then end up you know tearing all of that up um because you know, I guess I, I, I should say that I, one of the first things I, one of the best things that happened early on for this film was I got a fiscal sponsorship through the Southern Documentary Fund. And that facilitated the opportunity to be able to generate some funding that helped uh, early and throughout um, through donations from family and friends. So I would say, you know, look for those resources and, and things like that. Um, but then also the 
when you do that, you have to make all of these plans and say what your, you know, what the timeline is going to be for the film and what the, what the film is going to be like. And it's so early in the process and it just feels like fiction. Um, but uh, all of those things are such great exercises uh, for me, at least um, for kind of uh, prepping myself um, to, uh, I guess, as they say, you know, kill your darlings. Um, and um, the other thing I, I heard, the, I went to like a talk in New York one time and heard the Duplass brothers speak. Um, and and um, they made this comment that was, um, it, here we have this saying that is, um, the, you know, the cavalry is coming, right? Someone's coming to save you. Uh, and what they said was, it's really important to realize that you are the cavalry, we are the cavalry. And so when you're making this film and you're thinking, um, all I need to do is talk to the right person or, or someone, you know, to say yes and to get, you know, accepted to this program or whatever, those things are great. Um, but really the, it's up to you to sort of build that box around your project where nothing can stop you from um, making the the meaningful film that you want to make, and and it's not going to be what you thought it was, you know. And to embrace that, uh, embrace that process because it, it's likely going to be a better um, project. I think both of you basically talked. Well, all three of us talked about how the films, our projects, revealed themselves over time, um, and those are, are are I would guess. Um, uh, uh, happy, um, you know, accidents, as they say, I guess, or, um, you know, those are welcomed changes, uh, much better than what we would have anticipated. Um, so I, it's really, I think, kind of, like Fernando said, just don't give up and, and keep an open mind and uh, realize what you have access to and the people and places and stories that you have access to, uh, equipment that you have access to, and kind of go with that uh, and see what happens. Shout out Mark and Jay Duplass, um, friends of the festival yeah. for sure. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Carl, you wanna uh, go ahead here? Yeah, for me, doing this thing was like, came out of a real frustration of not getting my, not getting funding and not, get, getting my projects off the ground and it was just like uh, we're gonna we're just gonna make it and we have this date we are gonna sh start shooting there so we just work from there and when I will, I will never forget the first day of shooting because we came in and I realized in that moment how small my team was because it was the DOP the producer and the actor on that particular day and the do uh, the producer was doing sound because we didn't have a sound guy at that moment <laughs> but uh, me and the dop anas uh, knew that we were pushing on like we're just doing doing our thing and then i remember watching the dailies from that day and looking at anas and saying oh no <laughs> you, you see what just happened we we set a, a level of uh, what can you say aesthetic that's too high we will never be, be able to finish this film because the, the, the level of the lighting and stuff that we had made, again, breaking the manifesto was like off the charts and we, we would never be able to finish it. But we did. But if a word of advice for people who want to make their first film, getting it shot is the easy part. Like I had 15 days of shooting. I think that's uh, a little too little, but whatever. And I spent years in post, like years, wow. because of because of this this level that I was aiming at, or kind of got stuck on. So um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I um, if I was just if you were able to do like a a document film like uh, Festen or something, shoot it with this DV camera, and I think it would be easy to make your first film, but um, it doesn't always go that way. No, certainly doesn't. 
certainly <laughs> doesn't. Uh, guys, I just want to thank you all again so much for hanging out here and uh, spending some time and chatting with me a little bit. Just uh, one or two more questions for you all. Uh, I'm curious for all of you, um, along this way, we started off with a uh, discussion of this journey that you all have been on. Along the way, I'm sure there have been many people that have helped, that have been a shoulder to cry on or just a supportive um, friend to have, if you would. Is there anyone that you all would like to shout out or, or, or acknowledge for helping you to get to this point? Um, it, not necessarily a specific person can also be a group or a, a family, as uh, Fernando has spoken or with regards to a few times here. So, Carl, we can start with you if you'd like. I have to say that uh, it, it, it's very difficult to narrow it down to one person because it's been so much a team effort to realize this project. And, and like it's all of my filmmaking community has been involved in and my parents as well. Like my mother, for example, ended up being the set dresser on the film. <laughs> so it, it's like everyone, everyone has been involved. So right now everyone is also very excited because that film that I've been like dark away in for years is finally coming out and no one knows anything about it. And no one knows what it's about. No one has ever seen anything. So it's really exciting actually. There's a lot of people waiting to see this film that's been making it. I'm one of the few persons who actually saw it. So uh, it's uh, exciting times. That's amazing. Fernando, what about you? Well, I think in, in one way or another, uh, all the people or the friends, family are in more or, or less percent involved, no? because this kind of works, like Carl says, takes a lot of time and a highly percent of our minds focused during years. In, in, in when you are writing, when you are directing, in all the process, no? Uh, but for sure, my friend Nico Verona, I need to mention him because I think he, he makes a really good work in the role of Thomas in the main character. Uh, and he been with me during all these years of fighting. No? Then it's, it's for him also the, the award. And also our producers, because in our case, we, we, we had the opportunity with La Dalia Films, José Luis Rancaño and... Silvia Melero, Juan Barquín, Mamen Espinosa, to, to invest in us, in this group of, uh, of young people that want to, to do their own feature film, and they invest in us, and they invest two times, because The Passenger is also uh, <laughs> produced by the same producers that uh, now are really happy with the standard and, and the career in, in film festivals. And I mean... In, all my family, team, friends, and for sure Nico and the producers of La Valia Films. Fantastic. Phil, so, wanna uh, jump on? First and foremost, say you know my family and and my friends, and um, to Fernando's point, you know this 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 process really occupies your mind, um, and uh, so for everyone who sort of talked to me about you know listened to me and talked with me about. Uh, the themes and, and story and, and all of all of the different aspects of the film. And of course, in our case, as is the case with so many independent films, you know, we had to we had to do a fundraising campaign and fortunately we're able to get like, you know, a really good base of, of people who stepped out and said, I'm really excited about this and, and were offered encouragement and made donations. And so you know, like Carl said, there's so many people who have not really seen much uh, of the film so far. Um, and I'm so excited to share it with all of them. Uh, and that includes um, my family and friends who've, who've seen it more up close. Um, and then also, I, I do want to point out, um, I do want to recognize my, uh, my therapist who has talked me through um, you know, we've talked a lot about grief and we talked about uh, my mother's illness and relationships with uh, with our, you know, with my parents and it, it, and all of these themes that are part of the film that I really wanted to to dive into uh, just on a personal level, but but then also uh, really discuss uh, what other people go through out there. Um, and so that was an, an invaluable uh, asset to 
to this project and uh, and really helped me uh, choose the path that 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 I ended up choosing for it. Um, so uh, and then I'd also just like to to thank all of the people who watched drafts of the film and you know sometimes sat there for two hours or two and a half hours through something that was really undone and made it better you know and and had the took the time to sit down and think about um what would help the film and you know were honest with me about it so uh it, it really is it really is a a family effort uh and a team effort um so many people and, and i'm just really really grateful and really uh, thrilled to to share it with you all absolutely well um, I actually just realized we are just out of time, but as I close out here and, um, and close things off, I also just want to give you all the opportunity to say really anything else you'd like to at, at this point. You know, usually um, at, at a typical AFF, we would have you all at our awards luncheon and you'd have a, a, a minute or two to really get everything off your off your chest or out of your mind that you'd like to so first off i want to thank carl fernando and phil for just being here and again sharing your stories with us but uh yeah if anyone would like to jump in with uh anything they'd like to say that they may not have had a chance to i'll go first just just so the <laughs> pressure's off um yeah i mean i i, I think i i didn't i, I I haven't seen any of the other films yet because we're doing this before the festival and <laughs> and I just want to say like I, I'm really excited to to do to watch and I'm really excited to engage with everyone and this is our world premiere Carl I think it is yours too I'm not sure Fernando is it your no you nearly nearly because we 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 release in a small film festival but only yeah. in Spanish territory then no one from out of Spain can okay. can watch it okay so yeah so I just you know. I'm excited to to share my film, our film, but then also, you know, get engaged with with you all over this process. And so I I I I know it's going to be such a rewarding a rewarding experience. And I just want to congratulate everyone that's in the film. And and it's such an honor um, to get you know to be acknowledged in this way with this award, um, with the jury prize. But then also, uh, it's an honor just to be in the festival with such great. Uh, work and other artists and you know I'm I'm really happy to um, to be here where I'm a filmmaker talking to other filmmakers and learning more about the craft and um, growing so thank you thank you Phil Fernando Carl anything you all would like to add like Phil said it's it's really amazing actually to to release to to finally come out with this film because uh, for me it's it's been my life for. Uh, a few years now and at, at, at one point uh, the film was done and I thought it was never going to get out like it was never going to come out so having you guys in Austin uh, pick it up and um, and winning this award has just been uh, uh, really uh, mind-blowing and uh, surprising in every way so I'm, I'm very grateful and I hope that um, that that, yeah, that people will actually get to see this film because that, uh, it's really an underground Midnight movie, and uh, <laughs> uh, but getting here to Austin with it has has opened it up for a, a new audience, I think. So um, I'm very very grateful for that. So uh, thank you. Well, uh, in my case, uh, like everyone, like thank you to the jury, thank you to the to the organization. Uh, like uh, Carl said, uh, receiving an award before the festival takes place uh, well allows you to celebrate twice. Then Carol, we celebrate now. <laughs> we can celebrate when they release to the to the rest of the world. And well, just just say for us for uh, our movie is uh, really really uh, uh, a good new. Uh, it, it's gonna be a kickoff for us. Uh, we are really really nervous to 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 to, to show to the uh, United States audience, no, to. Uh, all our around the world audience to, to, to be able to, to see our small movie and our small history. And well, I have sent you my short films like during all these years and you never selected them. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> different administration. And, that wasn't and, me, man. Okay, that wasn't and me. now with my first YouTube film, you selected and you give us our first award, then perfect. 100% efficiency <laughs> in YouTube film. <laughs> Uh, you know, you got to try, try, try. Perseverance is key. Um, that's if, it, that's it. if nothing else, that's certainly something we can take away from, from this conversation. But gentlemen, it's really been an, an honor and a pleasure for me, um, not only to be a part of this conversation, but to uh, be a part of the process to select your films and have you all as part of our festival this year. Uh, we're really excited to uh, showcase your stories. And I think... Yeah, I think people are going to be pretty blown away once they get a chance to experience what you all have put together. So thank you to Carl Maroach, to Fernando Gonzalez Gomez, and to Phil Wall. And congratulations again a thousand times over. Hope you all celebrate. Celebrate the hell out of it. You deserve it. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys. Thank you very Take much. care. Take okay. care and stay safe. Until the next time. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. See you next year in Austin. We will, we will, we will, we will go. <laughs> Absolutely.